you don't have unlimited time when things begin to deteriorate, but you do have time. Okay, uh, last week during the webinar, Jeff pointed out that if you use weekly charts, a 5% buy line is not much different from the 10% buy line as far as the entry and exit points, and we are now at a five at the 5% weekly line. And then in another post, he wrote warning shot. So kind of a warning shot, kind of a shot across the bow. And I didn't agree with that. So let's see what he's talking about. So if you take the 50-week closing high and subtract 10% from it, I have it plotted here. If you have ACP, it, this should be an easy indicator to make in, in pretty much any package, just 0 0.90 times the 50-week closing high. But in this case, this is the 10% line right here, okay? And this is what Jeff's talking about. And his point is when you get past 5%, the market could be in trouble. Now, I tried for quite some time today to try to make something mechanical work without the moving averages and everything else that we use with the 50-week, uh, I'm sorry, with the, 10, with the TFM 10% system. And I couldn't make anything work with it, but what I did gleam from all of that analysis that I did. I spent a couple hours going through the charts today. But one thing that I walked away with is that uh, Jeff's right. It does give you a bit of a warning shot. So we're going to kind of flesh that out quite a bit. So if you go back and look at the S&P 500 over the last year or so, you could see when you're above that 5% line, it's pretty good, and this is especially true if you have Landry light above that 5% line, so to speak. So that might be a new indicator that we, we might want to explore is what happens when you're not only within 5% of the 50-week closing high, but the lows are also greater than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. So just like we'd have a moving average, and the lows are greater than the moving average for your upside Landry light, you could use the same concept with the 5% line or the 10% line if you want. And I think that would be kind of a cool thing. Now, good is when you're within 5% of the 50-week closing high. And as Jeff pointed out, a bit of a, a warning shot, but when you're within when you drop below 5%, that becomes a bit of a caution. And then obviously when you get below 10%, that's where bad things tend to happen. And I borrowed that where bad things happen from, as I say, probably every week from Guyard and Baleo. They wrote a paper, which I haven't gotten around to reading. <laughs> but I think I know the gist of it. It's like it, they basically pointed out that bad things happen below the 200-day moving average. Well, bad things happen below any performance metric. That's where things tend to happen. And you don't want to base everything on this fact, but Greg Morris pointed out to me that markets just don't implode from, from highs. It usually takes a while before they begin to implode. So as long as you're within those old highs, let's say 5%, the market is probably going to be okay. And even if you go back to the slide that happened in 2022, that began in early 2022, you could see it took weeks and weeks and weeks before it really began to implode. So you, the good news is you do usually have time to get out of the way. And even in the crash of 87, which we're gonna take a look at in just one second, although it felt like it happened overnight and the, and the crux of it happened overnight, there were a lot of warning signs, signs going into it. Anyway, let's take a look at the, when are we? This is uh, 2002, so this would be the 2000 top. And you can see, Good is as long as the market is in good shape, as long as it's above that 5% line. And then once you dip below 5%, that's where you end up in a caution situation. But notice that this top in 2000, it felt like it felt like the market just imploded and we had this big bear market that just came out of nowhere. And everybody was caught off guard. 
But notice how many weeks, this, these are weekly bars. We spent weeks and weeks and weeks in that caution area. Okay, Jeff says, I have been looking at using two closes below the 5% line plus below the 50 simple moving average, kind of a mix of the 230 and the TFM systems. We have come close, but not hit all of those metrics yet. Okay, when we get to live, I've got a, a live chart on this. We'll take a look at that. I like, I like the way you think. And that's one of the things I played with earlier today quite a bit. And unfortunately, I didn't really come up with any amazing research for you, but I was looking at the lows greater than the 5% line, okay? And by the way, you can look at the parameters right here. So this is 95% of the 50-week closing high. This is the weekly chart. And then 95 and then 90%. This is the normal TFM 10% system right here. It's at 90%. So again, in 2000, the market was in pretty good shape, and, and if you back this chart way out, you can see we had this rip-roaring trend coming in to this bear market top, right? And then we went into the caution zone for a while, and then, of course, we all know what happens. That's where bad things happen. Now, the 2009 top, you could see that we had a lot of good behavior in here. And this, is, uh, this, this run here was one of the runs that had me pretty excited about looking into what Jeff was saying, because it looks like you could come in here and say, okay, let's have some Landry lights, so to speak, above that 5% line. In other words, lows greater than the line. And after a couple of bars, or maybe even as many as 10 bars, maybe you have a bonafide trend in the works. Now, it's not always this easy, but you can see that the market did really well for a while. It had a few dips into that 5% line, okay? or 5% zone, but for the most part, it did fairly well. And then as it began to spend more and more time in that 5% zone, 5% plus zone, then it began to deteriorate a little bit. Now, if you put in weekly bow ties and, and all the other metrics we talked about last week, that's gonna help you in this analysis. And this week, we're just gonna focus on this one little piece of analysis, but obviously there's the bow ties, there's the Landry light, with the 30 simple, I'm sorry, with, with the with the moving averages, especially the 30 exponential moving averages, which is one of my favorite moving averages. So again, once you get into the red zone, meaning that you're 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high, that's where bad things tend to happen, okay? No guarantee bad things will happen, but sometimes it's better to fight and run away. In other words, be long a market, and then get out once you get that 10% parameter. And especially if you have like the TFM 10% system telling you to get out because you're also closing below that 50 week moving average. Sometimes it's better to fight and run away and live to fight another day. So if we go back to the crash of 87, you could see the market did really, really well. And it went into that caution zone a little bit Okay. And then finally it went back into it, tried to get out, came right back in. And then once you closed into the well into the 10% zone, that's when things came unglued, obviously, on the following Monday. This was a Friday, I believe. This is going to be the Monday. Now, no guarantee, like I said, every week, like I say every week. There's no guarantees, but the TFM 10% system did did trigger a signal on this day. I, I left the moving averages out. I had the moving averages in for, or the moving average in for a while, but I wanted to focus more on this zone chart. So we'll take a look at some of those things in one second. Now the 70s were an abysmal time, and Bruce Frazier, I was talking to him a while back. That was a chart kind of belief. And he said, as, as horrible as the 70s were, he said there were some pretty good trends mixed in between. And we had a pretty good trend coming into this sell-off in here. But notice that as long as we're above that 5% level, things generally are pretty good. And then we went into a caution mode. Now, here's another case where, to make an example of markets topping, the top was here, right? And it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It took about a year 
before it actually finished topping out. But it's been a long time in that caution zone. And let's just go back to 87 real quick. So the top was right there. So you got, if you don't count that week, you got one week, two week, three week, four week, five week, six weeks. So you got at least six or seven weeks, maybe even a little bit more before that market actually tanked. But once you get stuck in the zone, and, and maybe that's something that you guys uh, Jeff, you seem to be on this research. Maybe that's something we need to look into is once you get in the zone for a while, maybe things are due to deteriorate. So we got in the zone and we're, we tried to peep out. The low was still here. We peeped out a couple of weeks and then you can see we did eventually come back in. So again, it's good as long as you're within 5%. Uh, I would say a caution when you're more than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. And then, of course, 10% is where bad things happen. So there was another bull market in the 70s. And you had a decent trend coming into it. And notice that you spend some time in the caution zone. So as I preach quite often, you don't have unlimited time when things begin to deteriorate deteriorate but you do have time so again you can see once you got into the red zone things began to deteriorate further now of course the mother of all bear markets where the market lost 90 percent plus you could see you went into the caution zone and then you actually ended up quickly into that red zone and then we all know what happened after that Okay, kind of a Darvis box in the in the caution zone. Hey, I like the way you think. Darvis did a Darvis and how I made two million dollars in the stock market. He was a to those who don't know him and I do read the book. It's a good book. It's not as get rich quick as you would think. It won't work in today's markets unless we get into a rip roaring bull market. Okay, where everything works. But it is a concept that's worth understanding and visiting with, visiting if that makes any sense. <clears throat> and Darvis was a dancer and somebody gave him stock as payment. And just by complete chance, he ended up owning a stock. And then he started watching the stock and watching the behavior and noticing how the prices went up and down. And that kind of hooked him into trading. And what Darvis would do is when a stock moved from one box, let's say the box is, uh, I'm just gonna pull it out the air, let's say 20 to 25, when it moved out of that box, it went into the 25 to 30 box with a few little caveats, he would look to buy that stock and then stay with it as long as it continued to make boxes on top of boxes. It's a little, it's a little akin to a point and figure chart. Okay, so where are we now? So at the last minute, I got to thinking, let's put in a, a line at 100%. Now it's hard to see because it's right behind these labels, but this close right there is an all time high, okay? Back in 2021, end of 2021. And so this creates a green zone and kind of a caution zone and then obviously a 10% zone. Now, the way the colors overlay, I tried making it like a nice green, yellow, and then um, red, like a red light, like a traffic light, sort of like the the Landry light, uh, no, the bow tie proper order indicator or illustrator works. But what happens is the way they overlay, it, it changes color. So evidently, uh, I guess green and yellow make orange. So it just didn't work out. But anyway, this looks kind of cool, I think. And I know you want to party with me. But as long as you're in the green zone, meaning that, again, not to beat that at horse, but you're within 5% of the 50-week closing high, that's obviously a good thing. So we're just on the cusp right now. And we could easily slip back into that caution zone based on what happens tomorrow. And tomorrow would be Friday the 25th. 
So we're getting close again to the caution zone, and then we do have a ways to go before we get to the where bad things happen zone. Now I'm I'm trying, and try might be the key word in that sentence, but I'm trying to follow the TFM 10% system into queues to see how long I can hang on. But that 50-week moving average is a ways down there, and, and that needs to start catching up the price because I, I don't want to give up a lot of those open profits. So we'll see how that shakes out. But I had uh, 50, 60 points of open profits for a while there, and now that's beginning to deteriorate a little bit. Jeff said, I've been looking at using two closes below the 5% line plus below the, the 50 simple moving average, kind of a mix of the 230 and the TFM systems. We have come close, but not hit all of those metrics yet. Yeah, again, again, yeah, just rereading that post. I, I do like the way you think about that. So that's kind of a cool thing. And it's kind of fun to do these little, I know you want to party with me, but it's kind of fun to do these little simple things where you combine a little Landry light, maybe moving average and some of the performance based metric, such as the five and 10% line.